Textures are image assets that are essential for any graphics-related projects, including the ones powered by Unigen. They can be used as elements of graphical user interface, to draw a HUD, for example, as lookup tables for color correction, as masks, for example, to define areas of grass distribution. They can define the form of field objects and a lot more. But the main usage of textures is in materials. When a material is applied to a surface, textures are mapped to it, enriching its visual appearance and adding extra details without using any extra polygons. All textures in your project have small thumbnails in the Asset Browser. An extended preview is available when an asset is selected. Drag with left mouse button to pan the view and the mouse scroll to scale it. The following main image parameters are also displayed. Name and size, type and format, resolution, channels used, and MIP maps generated automatically upon import by default. Unigen supports the most popular bitmap texture formats up to 32-bit precision per channel. You can import a texture into your project in several ways, via the Import button or by dragging it right to the Asset Browser. In both cases, you'll see import settings available for adjustment, or by copying a file directly to your project's data folder via the File Manager. In this case, the asset will be imported with default settings as you return to the editor. You can change these settings later later via the Parameters window. Textures are also imported along with 3D models they are applied to. When importing an FBX model with linked textures, don't forget to choose Import Materials and Import Textures. All textures will be imported with the model and applied to it automatically. If a model contains embedded textures, they will also be imported to a subfolder with the corresponding name. Anyway, the FBX format does not support physically based workflow, which is a basic one in Unigen, so there's no point in assigning PB are textures in a third-party editor. For your convenience, all important parameters are combined into presets. By choosing a preset, you determine what sort of texture is to be generated, which compression algorithms and color channels are to be used. Choosing appropriate presets ensures that all textures are optimized for best performance and require less memory. Each texture preset has a corresponding file name postfix. By adding a certain postfix to the name of your texture, you enable automatic preset selection and speed up import of multiple textures. Let's consider all supported presets. By default, Unigen uses physically based workflow for shading, so a material with metalness workflow requires albedo and shading textures. There are two types of albedo supported, with and without alpha channel. Let's assign our new asset as an albedo texture. Shading texture is a compound one. It combines four different textures. Metalness, roughness, specular, and microfiber values are stored in separate channels. This ensures compatibility with modern modeling software. Legacy workflow is also available. You can assign diffuse and specular textures to materials having the specular workflow selected. Normal maps are used to add extra detail without using additional polygons. Red and green channels are the ones most commonly used, but there might be opacity data in the blue channel. Unigen correctly handles normal maps having green channel with downward direction. For normal maps with opposite direction imported from third-party platforms, use the Invert G Channel option. Ambient Occlusion preset is intended for baked ambient occlusion textures. Enable the feature in the material states and assign the imported texture. It will be more noticeable if we select Baked Occlusion in the Rendering Debug menu. Now let's consider Emission Textures. The emission effect uses an RGB texture, defining parts of the surface that emit light. It's treated both as a mask and a color texture, so different areas can emit light of different color, like the lights of cars. Normal mapping can be significantly improved by parallax mapping. Simply import a height map with the parallax preset enabled. Enable the parallax option and assign the imported texture to the corresponding field to simulate realistic surface relief. You can adjust height parameter to make the effect more or less pronounced. Now we're going to use textures as masks. Any image with a single or more channels can be imported as a mask. That can be used, for example, to determine areas of grass distribution. 
For this purpose, simply drag the imported texture to the mask image field of the grass object. Since our texture has a single channel, we should use a diffuse texture with a single type of grass. Number of channels in the grass mask texture must be the same as the number of grass types specified by the diffuse texture. Each channel controls distribution of the corresponding type. The next supported type is a cube map. Import an HDR panorama image to be converted into a cube map and set it as an environment background image. Unigen enables you to use vertical and horizontal cross layouts for cube maps. Cube maps can also be used by environment probes to render reflections. Volumetric objects require a 3D texture to have the density defined. In terms of graphics, a 3D texture can be represented as a set of layers, each being an ordinary flat image, together treated as a volume. Here we use the imported 3D texture to define density for a box volume in order to create a complex volumetric cloud. Such textures can also be used as lookup tables or store baked lighting information for global illumination and assign to voxel probes. Lightmap is the last available preset intended for legacy lightmap textures used to eliminate static objects. This approach can be used for compatibility with old projects. The recommended workflow for this case is to use voxel global illumination described in the dedicated tutorial. You can also customize import settings for a texture. First choose image type. In addition to the ones we considered, you can see a 2D array which is commonly used to store terrain details. Image format is an advanced parameter defining image pixel format, bit depth, and channels used. It determines texture size. Mitmap type defines the type of filtering to be used for mitmap generation. Unlike the default smoother box option, the point one produces a more sharp result, which may be used for vegetation at high distances. Use the combine option to import baked mip levels along with the texture. Texture resolution is defined by width and height. You can specify a certain value or keep the original size. It is recommended to use Auto, which automatically uses the power of 2 value closest to the original for optimization purposes. When you import a texture asset, a PNG, TGA, or other, a runtime file is created for it in compressed DDS format. This runtime is used by the engine and will be included in the final release build. Compression does not affect the source file, so it remains unchanged and can be modified at any time. Runtimes are kept in the corresponding subdirectory of the project's data folder. A runtime generated for a certain asset is easy to find via the Show Runtime in Explorer option in the context menu. In some cases, you don't want to compress your original assets, for example, an HDR texture. You can check the unchanged option to treat your image as is. However, be aware that TGA images may have a very large size and lead to a performance drop. For fine-tuning of the way your textures are mapped, you can specify which UV coordinates of the mesh are to be used via the UV mapping parameter. There are several options available. Map the texture using first or second UV coordinates of the mesh. Use procedural triplinar mapping in local or world coordinates. The second option projects a texture onto a mesh in absolute coordinates. Use overlap mapping. In this case, the texture is also applied procedurally, but projected only from the top. This gains a bit more performance than the triplinar mapping. Choose the Overlap World option to use absolute coordinates for texture mapping. UV coordinates are available for adjustment via UV Transform parameter. Click Edit icon to modify texture coordinates. Two approaches can be used. The simplest one is static by providing scale and offset values, which can be useful for creating tiled textures. The other one is animated, a complex solution for procedural transformation of texture coordinates. In addition to scale and offset, you can specify frequency and velocity to bring your texture to life. Moreover, the UV transform field allows you to use a Unigen script expression as input. This enables you to set up complex behavior for UV coordinates using global variables such as time, for example to create a simple effect of a flow. The most materials textures support clamping along axes. For example, you can limit tiling for a texture along X and Y axis. Clamp Z is used for 3D textures. Clamping is also very useful in cases when a low quality alpha texture is applied to a surface. There might be a visual artifact right at its edge. Enable the clumping along the corresponding axis to remove it. You can set up anisotropic filtering for each texture. It greatly improves the look of a texture viewed at large angles, but is unnecessary in other cases. So you can disable it to gain some performance. 
Common texture parameters can be found in the corresponding section of render settings. You can specify quality, clamp minimum, and maximum resolution, choosing filtering type and number of samples used for anisotropic filtering. Remember that using proper texture settings in your project is essential for optimum performance. For more details, please refer to our online documentation.